large vessels vasculitis it means now we are going to discuss in detail takayasus and then we will discuss about the temporal arthritis and later on we will go for other types of vasculitis as well. Now we come to discuss to detail Takayasu's arthritis. Now when we talk about Takayasu's, Takayasu's arthritis again first of all most important thing this is a vasculitic inflammation of large arteries. It is inflammation of aorta and its branches and Takayasu's is age group is less than 40 years usually involves Asian people, Asian females, right? And in this case, what really happens that inflammatory process starts from adventitia of aorta and extend to the media. And when adventitia and media of aorta and the vessels which are originating from aorta, they are inflamed, right? Because this inflammatory process is chronic, eventually all these inflamed vessels become fibrotic right and when there is fibrotic fibrosis in these walls right that fibrosis eventually lead to some complications what are the complications due to long term takayasu's vasculitis which is leading to fibrosis of aorta and aortic wall and fibrosis of the vessels originating from aortic wall the most important point is that uh, fibrotic vessels right they shrink and they produce stenosis what do they produce stenosis so takayasu's vasculitis produces stenosis and when these vessels origin undergo stenosis rightly rightly when this origin of these vessels undergo stenosis what really happens that blood supply to the upper limbs and blood supply to head and neck is reduced again let me explain in takayasu's vasculitis there is severe inflammation of the wall of the aorta as well as vessels which originate from the aorta and this inflammatory process uh, not only involve wall of aorta the inflammatory process may involve the visa visorum visa visorum are the blood vessels of the wall of the aorta right visa visorum also get inflamed and they are having a lot of mononuclear cell like lymphocytes and like Macrophage, uh, macrophages, lymphocytes and along with that there may be other cells like neutrophils and eosinophils also. So what really happens, wall of aorta is heavily infiltrated by the inflammatory cells, especially chronic inflammatory cells and visa visorum which are the vessels within the wall of the aorta also gets surrounded by uh, inflammatory cells, right? And eventually this inflammatory process which may become chronic leads to fibrosis. And when there is fibrosis of aorta at multiple points and especially when there is fibrosis of the vessels origin from the aorta, they result in very important clinical features. Now let me tell you what are the clinical features of Takayasu's disease. One, there are two types of clinical features. Number one, there are systemic features. Clinical features of Takayasu's, they can be systemic features and there can be local features. Systemic features mean that of course there is extensive inflammation of large part of the vessels. Uh, a lot of inflammatory cells are activated and those inflammatory cells are producing a lot of cytokines. So what really happens that those cytokines may produce fever, they may produce weight loss, they may produce anorexia, there may be malaise right so the, uh, there may be night sweats so there are systemic features in takayasu's uh, vasculitis especially at early stage of the disease when when inflammatory process is really flaring up right and this uh, flaring up of the inflammatory process especially in the early time may produce systemic clinical features right secondly because aorta which is normally a healthy aorta is an elastic vessel right and branch its branches are also considered elastic vessels but once takayasu's process has been uh, there for a long time then elastic tissue is destroyed and replaced by fibrous tissue so in a way you can say these vessel walls become fibrotic when vessel wall will become fibrotic they will lose their elastic property and that will translate into a very important thing normally what really happens when, uh, when left ventricle produces systole these vessels stretch out elastic vessels stretch out and during diastole they recoil back 
and the stretching out and recoiling of the vessel produces a pulse and that pulse is transmitted to the vessels for example you can feel the radial pulse right so but when Takayasu's vasculitis produces fibrosis of all this area plus it produces stenosis of the origin of these vessels then pulse is not properly formed and propagated to the radial arteries so result is that that in these females these young asian females right who are having takayasu's disease right they may not have you may not feel the pulse of course blood flow is coming but blood flow is not enough because there's less blood flow coming to their hands right and you cannot feel the pulse there's no systolic and diastolic differences in the uh, in the wall of the radial artery so some people call this condition pulseless disease so you have to remember that takayasu's giant make the aorta alter the aorta in such a way that person become pulseless right so we also call it pulseless disease so in upper limbs the vessels which are going to upper limb right not only their origins are stenotic you know their origins become stenotic right origin of these vessels become very very narrow so not only blood flow to upper limbs is reduced not only the blood pressure in upper limb is reduced but even you are unable to feel the pulse plus sometimes uh, there may be ischemia of the distal part of the upper limbs you may feel there's numbness on in the fingers or you may feel that there is uh, you can say tingling sensation in the fingers that is due to ischemia of the distal part of the limb so there may be cold upper limbs or there may be uh, tingling or numbness in the upper limbs and not and there may be loss of pulses in the upper limb and blood pressure will be low or unequal on both upper limbs along with that of course blood supply to the uh, through the carotid system is also reduced is that right because origins of carotid are also uh, stenotic so when blood flow through the carotid system is reduced then it means blood flow to the central nervous system is reduced and when central nervous system becomes ischemic it clinically translates into dizziness it may go to syncope you know what is syncope transient loss of consciousness due to reduced blood supply to the cerebral cortex so these patients who have takayasu's disease they may have repeated attacks of syncope they may produce dizziness right they may be, these patients may develop neurological deficits neurological dysfunctions due to reduced blood supply and of course you must not forget that they may also develop ocular abnormalities they may develop sometimes blindness right due to uh, reduced blood supply to the central nervous system and to the eyes so they have ocular problems as well right another important thing is that sometimes what really happens you know here is a valve which what is the name of this valve aortic valve sometimes this fibrotic aorta stretches out progressively of course elastic aorta during systole stretch out and during diastole it recoils but this fibrotic aorta stretches out progressively so there may be aortic dilatation and when there's aortic dilation then naturally when aorta, aorta stretches out it pulls away the uh, leaflets or cusps of aortic valve and aortic valve may undergo regurgitation problems right plus you know here there is the origin of which artery coronary artery so even sometimes fibrotic process may uh, spread around the mouth of the coronary artery in aorta and it may produce coronary artery stenosis coronary artery osteal ost osteal mean mouth so mouth of the coronary artery may develop fibrotic process around it so we call it coronary osteal stenosis coronary osteal stenosis that may translate into ischemic heart disease that may translate into ischemic heart disease again let's recap the takayasu disease is a problem with younger females younger mean less than 40 year of age and they, these females are usually asian females they are without pulses in their hand there's fibrotic stenosis of aorta and its vessels originating from it usually this condition is considered 
idiopathic, right? Classically, aorta and originating vessels are obliterated or they are having stenosis, right? 50% cases may involve pulmonary artery, right? And due to fibrotic process, there may be intimal wrinkling. That intima of the aorta may be wrinkled, is that right? And adventitia may be infiltrated with mononuclear cells, right? And especially mononuclear cells may be concentrated around the visa visorum and we say visa visori may develop a cuffing peri arterial cuffing around that due to these cells right again giant cells may be present in this disease takayasus but giant cell may also be present in temporal arteritis so how do you differentiate these two conditions the best way to differentiate is age group because takayasus uh, start before the age of 40 and uh, temporal arteritis never uh, almost never start before the age of 50 years that is a really old age problem right and then we have talked about that real complications related with it are ocular complication and central nervous system neurological deficits and there are no pulses in the radial arteries you may find limb ischemia or there may be tingling or coldness in the limb is that right yeah um, also affects the yeah, actually Visa Visorum, okay, let me enlarge the wall of the aorta. This is the wall of the aorta and here is a Visa Visorum. This is a vessel which supplies the blood to the wall of aorta. Actually, syphilis, in the patient with syphilis, they may also develop uh, mononuclear cells around the Visa Visori. Right, but remember, in syphilis, the cells which surround the visa visori and visa visorum and compress them and destroy them, those cells are plasma cell. But when you talk about Takayasu's disease, in Takayasu's disease also uh, there are cells, inflammatory cells around the visa visori, but usually they are not plasma cells, they are lymphocytes and they are, what are they? They are macrophages and sometimes even neutrophils and sinophils. Another very important point that syphilis involve the aorta as a, at its tertiary stage. So it involves uh, 40 and plus age, but Takayasus involve the aorta of course 40 years and less. Is that clear? Another important thing in syphilis, uh, eventually patient develops secular aneurysm. Is that right? Aorta become too much dilated. But usually in Takayasus, it would have become stenotic, right? Do you have any more question? No. Okay, so we were talking about this disease. So how do you treat it? Because it is a I mean, immune-mediated vasculitis. So sometimes in a, uh, patients, when disease is really aggressive, we suppress the immune system by giving corticosteroids, right?